Hi again! Today's tutorial will teach you how to get a white base for makeup looks and then I will show you a potential use for that white base in this frustrated doll look inspired by, well actually a blatant copy of, the work of Maria Rabunki. She and all the product deets will be linked below. Let's get to it! Starting off I like to take a water activated paint to start my white build up. You might think you are doing something wrong when you paint on this and find that it's super streaky. And I promise you, you aren't. You would just need several layers of white activated paint to get an opaque white. Which is why I'm going over this with Ben Nye White Cream Paint. It's super pigmented and thick, so I need a very dense brush to dab it on. Alternatively, you could use a beauty blender. Cream paints like this are better than water activated paint for a white buildup because almost all water activated paints start to crack when you have them in two thick layers. Also, the creams are waterproof so they won't streak when you sweat or do what I do later. Cream paints, however, do not dry like water paints, so you need to powder the heck out of them. I started with a baby powder and a cheap brush, but it broke. So I went in with my Mikasa Beauty brush, used code CHRISTINEMU15 for 15% off these, and all the dense oval brushes I am using with the cream paint. Then I am super excited for my new jumbo eye pencil in milk. I had missed its musk. And this isn't necessary for most times you will need a white base, but to complete the full white look, tight line your upper and lower water lines with an eye safe pencil. Now onto the frustrated doll. To start I made the cast of the top of my head covered it in plasticine in the general areas I knew I wanted the brain and upturned hair, and then moulded it into the basic shape with my fingers and a twisted piece of wire. Once I was happy with the hair I made the brain, first by rolling up thin worms of plasticine, laying them in a brain kind of twisty motion, and then I brushed them down, carved out the excess and hair dried the plasticine to melt it slightly and make it smoother. Then I made the shape of the pigtails with newspaper, masking tape and a skewer, covered them in plaster bandages as, as well as the hair, and keeping them in two separate pieces. Then I covered the brain in liquid latex, peeled it off when dry, and filled this negative with some red FX gelatin. Gelatin and latex don't bond, so you can peel it off easily. Now you have a positive brain that you can paint on if you want to. I added black to the crevasses and pink to the top of the things, whatever they are. To start the doll makeup we cover our eyebrows. I add a big blob of glue and blend it smoother with water on my finger. Since the white cream is waterproof you don't have to worry about the water or drips. Still, you should do this before the white. Then I cover it with white and powder it. Now contouring isn't really an option for me so I'm contouring my collarbones and neck so I look a little less like a turtle whose head is only just picking out of its shell. Eye makeup. Using greys, do what works for you. I ended up changing this and the nose contouring about six times. I think I ended up making the v-shape more droopy and sad looking. Again, ignore the nose but I contour my cheeks the same way I did the eyes, with greys and blacks. And ignore the dimples too, but I am covering my head in cling film as a makeshift bald cap. Feel free to use a real one if you have one. Now we are going to glue the brain to our heads with liquid latex, making sure the centre divide is somewhat centred on our head. And also go over the edges with latex before you add the plaster hair. Now I cover my exposed hair in Vaseline to protect it because we are going to use latex and plaster which are both happy to hold onto your hair and never let go. Now put on your hair pieces by placing them where you want, holding them there and placing the bandages around the edges. Now I hear a lot that plaster bandages can burn you and that people's skin will just burn off if you use them. It's an exothermic reaction, they say. It will burn you. With a basic knowledge of chemistry and Google at my side I can say that I doubt this unless people are doing very silly things. But I will talk more on that later. Right now I am making more hair ridges with plaster and covering the edge with latex. Okay. 
Now my latex and plaster weren't straight white, so I covered them with some white acrylic. Since it's not actually the face that you're painting, it's okay to use acrylic. On your actual skin where the latex meets, use white cream paint or water activated paint. Now I feel under the hair that is not covered by the brain with red. The pulled back hair with watered down red or pink. And then go in and make more of that brain pattern with black. Now hold on to your pigtails, we are going to get some chemistry down. Plaster of Paris, which is what is covering the plaster bandages, will produce 17.2 kilojoules per mole when it reacts with water. One mole of plaster, or calcium sulfate dihydrate, is 172 grams, which is basically a full roll of the plaster bandages, if not two, as half of the weight of the bandages is the bandages themselves, not just the plaster on them. The heat to burn skin needs to be about 41.8 kilojoules per meter squared of skin after the skin has already reached 55 degrees Celsius. So if your face is roughly 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, it will take four kilojoules of heat after your skin is 55 degrees to get a heat burn. Roughly half or a full roll of plaster bandages on your face applied quickly enough that the heat is not lost. Too long didn't listen, you would need to have your skin or the water you were dipping the bandages in at 55 degrees Celsius or 131 degrees Fahrenheit and apply most of the roll of plaster bandages quickly enough that all of the heat of the reaction is transferred to your skin to burn exothermically. So in short, I am pretty sure that most burns from plaster are due to the corrosive nature of calcium sulfate base reacting with sensitive skin than actual heat burns. Unless of course you are using hot water to apply them, in which case don't, they set the same with cold, and that way any heat of the reaction will be heating the cool water and not your skin. I have never even felt the plaster bandages get warm. If you are using straight plaster, and a lot of it, of course you could get burned. But if not, and using cold water, and working slowly, then you shouldn't get burned unless your skin is sensitive to bases. Enough jargon, now we have our pigtails on, we just have to extend the split head down between our eyes, fix our dimples, and add blood trips to the lips, using Mayron Red mixed with black. Then add some big doll-like lashes I painted in white, and cut up lash sections to the lower lid, and you can't see it what I'm doing, but at least you got a nice shot of the brain. Add some white gloves and you should be done! But I am silly and added some white lenses. These lenses I cannot see out of at all, so I did a stupid and pushed the lens to the side to see and then pushed it back. Do not do this! I cringe so hard looking at these shots now as I see how red my eye was getting. This pushing to the side and back all the time scratched my eye a little bit. It is the day after I filmed this and it is still a little bloodshot and a tiny bit sore. These are Blind White by Colourvoo and they are super cool but I recommend their mesh white contact lenses over these as you can literally see nothing but bright lights. If you do ever want to wear these, either wear only one or have at least one friend, preferably more, to help you walk around, take photos, etc. and then take them out as soon as you can. Don't be a stupid like me and push them to the side. My other eye is fine so I confirm it was not the lenses at fault but my own stupidity. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, whether it was how to make a white base, how plaster isn't actually microwaving your face, or what not to do with your lenses. I will see you tomorrow with a bloodshot right eye. Sorry and stay classy peeps and don't be a stoop like me. Let's hope that all that stuff was good because it's not going back on. <laughs>